Film Club. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Film Club. I'm one of your hosts, Andy Harrison, and with me, as always, it's Andy Donaldson. Hello. Every week in Film Club, we invite you along to watch a film with us, and this week, it's time to take a look at The Man from Earth. Recommended by my brother. This is a group of people kind of coming together in a cabin because one of their friends is leaving. They're a bunch of professors and intellectuals. And what happens is that the guy, John, uh, who who is leaving, he says, I've been there 10 years, you know, I've known him quite well. He starts to explain how he is older than they think. And he says he's from prehistoric years. You know, he's, he's lived uh, 16, 14, sorry, 14,000 years. The, the debate as to whether he's telling the truth or not. What if a man from the Upper Paleolithic survived until the present day? What do you mean, survived? Never died? Yes. What would he be like? Oh, I know some guys. You ever been to the Ozarks? No. <laughs> it's written by Jerome Bixby mm-hmm. and uh, directed by a guy called Richard Schenkman. So I love that you first credited Jerome Bixby there because this is yeah. through and through a writer's film. Um, yeah, definitely. I think so Richard Schenkman, who anyone who doesn't know, um, hasn't really done anything else actually. So I did hop onto his profile, and he's got a couple things. There's like there's some uh, I think Playboy documentaries on there. There's like <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> um, I saw that. Abraham Lincoln versus zombies. Mm. So this is through and through. It's Jerome Bixby's film. Um, it's a film that I think personally is significantly better than the sum of its parts. I think that uh, the look of the film. Like the the cinematography is pretty dreadful. Uh, I think that the audio of the film is pretty dull, with a couple of exceptions, but we'll get into that later. Um, mm-hmm. I think that the performances are quite underwhelming, with a couple of exceptions here or there. I agree, um, and I think that it's not exactly cut very well, but the writing sort of shines through, and even the writing goes off the rails sometimes. And yeah, yeah. this film was really enjoyable to watch. I thought. Like a lot of the time people are talking in a way which the conversations aren't necessarily like character driven conversations. We're not really trying to believe in these people. Instead, it's clearly just Jerome Bixby sort of um, theorizing and it's him just sort of pondering certain questions of humanity and putting those down onto the page. So the, the the questions and the conversations that come up aren't always character driven. They're just thought driven. It was interesting to see his thoughts on the subject and his kind of like counter thoughts, let's say, He's having like an internal conversation with himself when he wrote this film. Um, mm. And it is it, one thing you mentioned about like all the technical details, you've got to appreciate that this is a budget of £200,000, I think it was. Yeah, absolutely so, nothing. Yeah, yeah. So the, you can see that the fact he's filmed it in a cabin. Um, there was, there was, for me, there was comparisons of this film, especially with the intelligence, uh, intelligent of uh, conversation, let's say, is um, my dinner with Andrea. Yeah, hundred you know percent. Yeah, so we, we did a review of that in a while back, and it's like kind of he's, he's had there's two two people there, two artists having a conversation, two actors, I think it is, isn't it, or comedians, and a conversation about um, about life and their experiences. And this is less so that this is more about them theorizing life or theorizing this this man's existence or this you know his potential existence. Um, I'm not gonna lie though, I wasn't a huge fan of it, um, hmm. probably because. I'd struggle with my dinner with Andrea, to be fair as well. But for mm. me, it was uh, for me, it just felt like a bit cyclical. And what I mean by that is, John, the the, the main guy that the guys lived fourteen thousand years, he would say something. They would debate. That they'd, they'd argue. These friends of ten years would argue, and in some cases, get quite angry to the point one of them had a gun to him. Mm. And then John goes, "Oh, forget it. I went too far." Like he did that when it was going about religion. He did it towards the end. You know, oh, it's all. A, I mean, if you haven't watched this film by now, then shame on you. But he goes like, oh, I just made it all up when in fact he hadn't. And it's just like, if he does it three or four times, that was, the, for me, the massive flaw in the writing. The guy, mm. he he knows what he wants to do and he knows what he wants to say and he, he brought some really interesting theoretical and phys- philosophical points. But there's three or four kind of cycles of, of that happening. I just felt it was a bit, it was hard to empathise with the characters. It was hard to believe in points. My biggest issue with this film is towards the end when he says, oh, this is just a joke. And then there's these people of 10 years that have, spent the entire evening arguing to believe that he's right and actually like 
going down the rabbit hole of like, my God, this guy might be that. And then suddenly when he says it's a joke, half of them suddenly accept it. I'm like, mm. what the fuck? These are supposed to be like intelligent, you know, professors. These are supposed to be people who are, are willing to argue the point. And when he says it's a joke, so actually, no, you might just be saying that just to get off our case. It's an easy cop out. Yeah. I can forgive it in some respect in that capacity, just on one character. It's it's the lady who's very religious and she's sort of, you know, she's losing her faith just by the idea mm. that she's talking to <laughs> to the representation of Jesus. Um, and I think that someone like that would want to take comfort in the idea that the whole thing has been a lie. You know, she would she'd be very quick to accept that. Clearly, everybody else accepting it is just a nice sort of, all right, time for the film to end. Like this conversation has to get wrapped up somehow. Yeah, exactly. There was a little mini twist where I think um, John turns out to be his dad. I think that was it was. And then he goes mm -hmm. off and has a heart attack. There's so much foreshadowing about this guy and like his ill health. Mm -hmm. And then at the end where he was like, oh, my God, you must be here. And I was like, well, this guy's going to die now. And then it happened, and I was like, fucking hell, like, where to, like, dramatise, overly dramatise the fucking ending when you've already, like, everyone's already... I'd, the ending spoiled it for me, I think, and that's why I have such an issue with the film. And it started off so well. It really did start off well. There was a lot of comparisons I mentioned earlier to My Dinner with Andre, but there was also quite a bit of comparison, um, or le le less so comparison with Glen Gary, Glen Ross, in the mm. sense that it's a bunch of people having conversations. I know... Glen Gary, Glen Ross is a lot of different environments, but in the end, that was a that was a play, that was a theatre. I feel this film, if it became like a theatre production, would do exceptionally well. Mm, well, it did. Uh, interestingly oh. enough, it was it oh, was shit, adapted. No it was adapted to theatre um, because oh, I mean, fuck. obviously, it, it screams theatrical performance. You know, it, yeah, it, yeah. it's sort of that same sort of uh, character, very cheap to produce, easily put on stage. Jerome Bixby, by the way, for anybody who uh, doesn't know, he was a sci-fi writer for the most part. Um, he wrote. A couple episodes of Star Trek, and there's a there's a later reference in the film to Star Trek. And in fact, one of those episodes echoes uh, this film quite heavily. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this: Requiem for Methusala. Um, yeah, no, I think I think you got that right. Uh, in which there's a there's a character very similar to the one that David Lee Smith plays in this, John Oldman, and Jerome Bixby apparently had, had sort of written a chunk of this script. Uh, quite a few years prior and you know put it down never quite finished this and it wasn't until later in his life actually when he was when he was actually you know very near um the end of his life unfortunately that he finished it he people have sort of said that he supposedly finished it on his deathbed and i feel like right. a lot of that sort of questioning that comes through in the script um you know the the idea of pondering about humanity a lot of it comes through maybe because of the circumstances the age that he, that he was Maybe it'd be easier if I were. Crazy? No. For me, I think the first half of this film is a little bit more interesting. Especially Definitely. when he's talking about like his time as a, as a caveman and, and sort of aging up a little bit. The point at which it starts to lose me a little bit is where he claims to be Jesus. Um, yeah, yeah. At that point, we are on like full fantasy terms. I thought that it, it struck a nice balance up until that point. Um, and then the idea that suddenly this one man, because they, they emphasize the fact that he can only have a singular experience. He's not, he's not overly intelligent because he can only ever learn as much as one man can experience, regardless mm. of what time period is, he's in. Um, but then suddenly he's, you know, he's, crossed the ocean with Columbus and he he learned from <laughs> Buddha and then he becomes Jesus. Like <laughs> suddenly he becomes the focal point of an entire religion and entire belief system. And at, for me at that point, it's, it's, a, it's asking a little bit too much. I do think that there's some good performances in here. David Lee Roth, um, <laughs> fucking hell, David Lee Smith does a lot of heavy lifting. It's not an incredible performance. But much like my dinner with Andre, he has the talking role. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. He comes then, into it more in the middle of the film. But yeah. And then we've got to give a nice little nod here. Tony Todd busting out a yo-yo every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why was he busting out a yo-yo? The whole BC time is a landscape existing before and behind us. And we move, we move through it slice by slice. Clocks measure time. No, they measure themselves. The objective referent of a clock is another clock. That's very interesting. What has it got to do with John? Oh, he, he might be a man who lives 
outside of time as we know it. Because this was sort of given to us, I guess, as an interesting twist on a sci-fi film. Um, I love the idea of uh, essentially a bottle sci-fi film. You know, it all takes place in one little place. It's very theatrical. It's just a bunch of people talking. I love the concept. I also really like how parts of it are delivered. I know you're not a big fan of the ending. Uh, that ending with him being the the father of one of the the people in the room, and the whole idea that you know he's lived there for ten years, not out of circumstance, but actually because he wants to just keep an eye on one of his children. And that little moment they sort of share before he dies of passing of information, the thing that ultimately leads to his heart attack, um, that for me actually kind of works. And I think that it asks a lot of really interesting questions. It does it in a bit of a more pulpy way, a bit more of a poppy way than something like My Dinner with Andre, but I, I, I had fun with it. Yeah, it's. I think you're right. The initial half is good for me, and then it just loses its trail. It's not something I would uh, probably watch again, but, you know, cheers a recommendation, Ben. Yeah, thank you very much. So there is The Man From Earth. You can let us know in the comments below what you thought of The Man From Earth. Do you know anybody who may or may not be Jesus? <laughs> but Andy and I will be back once again next week because we're going to take a look at Casino Royale. What started it all, or at least the new series. So until then, get watching. <laughs>